This video is directed particularly to Pastor Sunday Adelaja. I watched an interview that you granted and the topic was on why or why shouldn't the Igbos leave to form their country that they know as Biafra. And quite frankly, your response or your ideas that you gave to that video was very, very shameful to say the least. I am very, very angry and I'm going to, as much as possible, try to restrain myself from generalizing the Yorubas based on that your interview because if I'm given a free will to speak, I would say you displayed the typicality of a Yoruba man. But I will try as much as possible to constrain myself because I'm very, very angry. I wouldn't blame. Now, I can understand why Mazi Namdikanu said Igbos should not attend Yoruba churches. Because if a pastor like you can sit in a public media and say the things you say, then I pity those who attend your churches. And I pity the whole idea where Christianity is tending towards to. More so that most churches in Nigeria are pastored or, or, or owned or channeled by, by, by Yoruba GOs. So if I am opportune to see a Pastor Sunday Adelaja thinking the way I see him, uh, I see him, uh, what he did in, in that interview, then there's a huge problem with our church. I'm going to make a video on churches in Nigeria. And how they affect or how they are constraining the Nigerian polity as it is. But that's for another video. But Post Pastor Sunday Adelaja, Adelaja, Pastor Sunday Adelaja, I am very, very, very disappointed in you. In that video, you were asked that is it okay for the Igbos to leave Nigeria and form their country? Since in certain quarters it is believed that it is a divine, uh, it, it is a divine pronouncement that Igbos should go. And here are your responses. I'm going to take each response and I'm going to address it one at a time. In your video, you said it is foolishness for the Biafra to consider forming a country because they will be small and alone. How very stupid is that kind of statement? Is Kuwait not a small country? Are they suffering? Kuwait. Kuwait is, 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 is not as big as a state in Nigeria. Yet it is a country. Are they complaining? So that clearly shows your first, your first point in that video shows how ignorant and how very... You see, I saw in that video you are, play, you, you are, you are being mischievous with your reasoning. You are being mischievous with a logical fact. You are being mischievous with logical inferences. Because uh, you, had, you, you had a motive that you are trying to, you know, uh, massage. Which is why I, I see... Anyway, let's go ahead. Your second uh, point in that place, according to how you place them, you said, uh, nobody will take the Igbos seriously oh uh okay yeah you said the Igbos wouldn't have been relevant if they were not part of nigeria that what is making the Igbo relevant is because they are they, they are nigerians I, 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 I saw and i'm like what are you telling me that first and foremost this thing is coming from the mouth of a nigerian of a nigerian and then a pastor i felt a pastor should go into a public medium and be suggesting ways that Igbo should not go. Please, we are brothers, don't go. Uh, we know what you are going through. Please, we shall try to make Nigeria work. Uh, we know this, you are being marginalized. Countries should, you know, I mean, find ways that bring people together and not justifying uh, uh, certain injustices that are being meted on a certain people. And then you're trying to paint a fact that you're trying to. Uh, misconstrue the fact you said 
Nobody will take Igbo seriously. Had it been they were not part of Nigeria, you are a thunder fire that mouth that used to say it. The Igbos will even be far more recognized if they leave Nigeria. Because they are already everywhere. They are almost everywhere. In the last couple of months, I've, I'm receiving calls from Canada, from UK, from, from uh, Australia, uh, everywhere in the country. They are reaching me. So they are everywhere. How can people with tentacles around the world not be important when they are part of Nigeria? Let's go. Your third point was that you alluded that if the Igbos leave, they will become inconsequential, uh, like uh, like uh, countries like uh, Guinea, Benin, and Togo. I, I don't know. Are Togolese Igbos? Are Guine Guineans, are big Guineans, or what, however they are referred to? Are they Igbos? Are Benin people? Are they Igbos? Everybody is entitled to how he wants to live. If you are in Nigeria and you believe that how you want to live is not how you are given, in a positive sense, you have a right to say you want to stay or not to stay. No, let me tell you, Pastor Adelaja, you are part of every Yoruba man that is supporting one Nigeria because currently as a country is, is benefiting you. Because you have a seaport that everything that comes into the country comes through you. Every, every, every part of the country, this mischievous romance that you have with the caliphate, such that whatever comes to the caliphate, the caliphate remembers their partner in crime and takes small of it and gives to you. And therefore you want Nigeria to be one. Who says Nigeria must be one? When a group of people are dissatisfied, you, you ask yourself, why are they dissatisfied? If their cause... If, if their reason for dissatisfaction is genuine, you address it. Nigeria is falling apart and you are coming on, 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 on a public medium to say that, uh, you say to say all this rubbish. Now, your fourth point in that uh, video was that Biafra is an ego-driven project. That it is, it is the egos of the ego that they, that is that is driving them to want to form the country they call Biafra. Can you imagine? Is, is this a pastor talking? Is this a pastor talking? So, this Biafra, Biafra you are hearing now, you think it is driven by ego. Because, they, oh no, I'm disappointed. Let me tell you, Biafra is driven by an awareness consciousness. By a consciousness that being part of a country reduces you to less than nobody. Being part of a country requires that you must score 260 as against 170 that a caliphate should score before he gets into the university. Biafra is driven by a consciousness that being a certain tribe or ethnicity prevents you from being the president of a country, prevents you from getting uh, important uh, position in the country. That is what is driving Biafra. Biafra is driven by a consciousness that because you belong to a certain ethnicity, certain developmental project must not come to your side, but to the duo of the Yoruba people and the Hausa people who have, hold, who have held Nigeria to, uh, by, 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 its, by its brink. Every, every developmental project is concentrated in, in either the Yoruba uh, region or the northern region. And what is driving this project? Money taken from the south. So you come to my region of the southeast and take my wealth to develop your, your, your regions. And then you said it is ego that, uh, that is driven my, 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 they say my reaction. Every reaction begets an equal and opposite reaction. So, Mr. Adelaja, fake pastor, Biafra is not driven by ego. It is driven by awareness that the region is suffering injustice. And therefore, that you take wealth from my region to develop your wealth, and you open your thinking mouth to say that Nigeria must be one. Lie, sir. It is not God that is revealing this thing to you. You are deceiving yourself and deceiving the people that are in your church. Your fifth point, you said 
The force driving Biafra is a feeling or a thinking that they will be better off if they are alone. So your, your, your point just suggests that it is not in the affirmative. You went for that to say that now that they are in Nigeria and they are not being led by uh, Yoruba, they are not being led by uh, Bini, Bini people, they are not being led by uh, Hausa, it is their own ethnicities that are leading them. How far are they better off? My brother, how, uh, Pastor Adelaja, let me ask you one question. Have you taken time to measure your IQ? Because I, I, it, it, I tend to have a feeling that you must have a very, very low IQ. Your reasoning doesn't suggest any form of IQ at all. Let me tell you unequivocally that should a country emanate out of Nigeria and it is championed by the generality of the people in the southeast, I want to tell you that that place will be paradise. Yes, the reason why you don't have the, the better offness if there's a word like that now, is because they are, we are operating a country, a federal system that gives too much power to the center so that they can come to your region and determine what happened or what should not happen. So I tell you, Mr. Adelaja, I take the pastor out. I will not, to the end of this video, I will not refer to you again as Pastor Adelaja. Instead, I will refer to you as Mr. Adelaja. Mr. Adelaja. So, Mr. Sunday Adelaja, let me tell you and look into my eyes the Igbos and the rest of the people in the region when we now get our unity i am telling you that we will live far better off than what we are experiencing in this country that you refer that has been referred to as a shithole your sixth point you said being in nigeria <laughs> oh dear you said it is a blessing for the Igbos that they are in Nigeria because they are apparently at this point enjoying the oil of the Niger Delta people. God, turn that fire out your mouth. Oh, so you, uh, the, because you said uh, the blessing, the, they are enjoying the blessing uh, of the oil, the Niger Delta, uh, you, you said, you, this is how you put it. You said, being in Nigeria is a blessing to Igbos and Yorubas because they are enjoying the oil of the Niger Delta people. Turn that fire your mouth. Oh, so you are enjoying the oil. It, it, I'm, I'm happy that you know now that the oil of the Niger Delta people. But take away that Niger Delta because that is the divisive nomenclature that you, you, are, you are fostering on us to, to prevent us from coming together. Let me put it straight. You are enjoying the, the oil of the southeastern region. Put it that way. So you know that you, well, Mr. Adelaja, you, you Yoruba people are the one enjoying the oil. We, we are not enjoying our oil. If we do, we are not enjoying it as much as we should enjoy. How can we be enjoying oil when we have Ogoni land that, that, is, that has been messed up? People of Bayasa villages don't have portable water to drink. They have to export water to drink. And you call that enjoyment? People in Bayasa cannot fish because the, 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 the exploration of oil has polluted the water and therefore it, it has made it ecolo ecolo ec ecologically uninhabitable by marine life. And then you say we are enjoying? Our farmlands have been taken over by 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 um, oil spillages and you say we are enjoying erosion have made our soil very bad without uh, care from government you say we are enjoying our roads are dead traps in the southeast region and you say we are enjoying you mr adelaja you are a disappointment and a disgrace to the profession of pastorhood your 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 seventh point as you put it is that <laughs> oh god you said biafra cannot survive without the allocation of oil can you see how very stupid you are you said biafra cannot survive without the allocation of oil can you see how very stupid you are how can he be waiting for allocation of oil when the oil is his own how do I wait for a look? How can you be allocating what is my own to me? 
by the grace of God, by the power of the real God that exists, I pray that faith pastors like Mr. Adelaja, if they don't repent, they, they should fall down and die. Die, 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 according to Mountain of Fire. Because your, 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 your falsehood is what is preventing Nigerian uh, um, Christians from realizing the, the, the machination of the caliphate's uh, po po uh, uh, political maneuvers. I'm so disappointed. I'm so. I just watched the video a couple of minutes ago. I didn't know that such a thing is circulating. I did. I would have responded much, much earlier than this. How can a man be, you you call yourself a pastor? A pastor should be bridging, not separating or not making case for one side. If the Igbo say they want to leave, is their right? Is their right? If they want to leave, they should leave. It's their right. You don't force people to remain in a place they feel they are not comfortable. And to say it is ego-driven. What, what is ego about that? When you are in a country that you don't feel you are recognized. If, I'm telling you, Mr. Adelaja, if Nigeria today is 54 years, um, 1960 to 2009, 59 years old, and the Yoruba man has not been present since its inception, and Igbos have been president, every other time has been president except Yoruba, would you be saying this nonsense that you are saying? Not that we care of being president. We don't want president again. We want to go. Eat that and let that suffocate you. No amount of twisting of facts can make our struggle uh, look unreal. It is real and it is real. Take that and swallow it. Fake pastor. Look at this bullshit man.